Alors, notre invité aujourd'hui, euh, qui joue le plus bel instrument du monde, Marina Thibault, altiste, euh, qui est euh, une personne extraordinaire euh, que j'aime beaucoup, qui est une musicienne euh, passionnée et qui est une, une grande défenseur de l'alto. Euh, non seulement soliste, chambriste et pédagogue aussi. C'est comme pédagogue aujourd'hui que vous allez la découvrir. Euh, elle enseigne à l'Université de Colombie-Britannique. Uh, our first, uh, not first, sorry, our guest this afternoon, uh, <laughs> Marina Thibault, wonderful violist uh, teacher at the UBC, a soloist. She's played uh, many concertos with many orchestras, as well as a very, very sought after chamber player. Uh, Marina, un gros merci d'être là, puis uh, je te souhaite une, une excellente session avec nos quatre altistes uh, cet après-midi. Merci, j'ai tellement hâte. <laughs> Donc, uh, le Premier, euh, premier altiste aujourd'hui, Shelby, avec qui j'ai joué déjà deux fois. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Shelby. Hi, sorry, my French is really bad, but I It's can. Right? <laughs> I was just telling um, uh, our auditors that uh, we've played together twice already. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you play better than me, but it's okay. <laughs> well, we were part of the same band, so that was great. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Um, let me tilt this up a little bit. Uh, we briefly uh, talked about the, there's two pieces that uh, you have ready, but maybe you can tell me which one you'd like to start with. Yeah, I was going to start with um, the Caprice du Tone. Yeah. I have the, I'm also doing the Elegy, but I, I mean, I don't have piano, so I don't know if you want to hear it. It's okay. I think it's preferable to start with, there's a lot, always a lot to say about the, the, the Caprice du so let's do that. Okay. Can you see? Is this okay? Great. Okay. Maybe you want to tune so I can uh, I can hear you first, and then if there's any adjustments. Uh... Okay. Sure. Uh, let's see. So you did all the sound checks already with Morito, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, it doesn't hurt. Okay? Yeah, it's better for me if you're a little bit. Um, moving ah. back if, okay. yeah, a few feet. Yeah. Good? Thank you. 
by the way, I really don't mind if people turn their videos on. If your audio is off, you will not be primary on the screen. And I, I quite prefer that because then it's not just me and Shelby. <laughs> um, I mean, it's all about you. Don't get me wrong. Um, so Shelby, um, I will focus with you on a few key elements just to kind of like get the view down to the next step. Um, so this piece for me is very much part of bel canto aesthetic, right? It's so vocal. Yeah. And then we, we kind of get to uh, know what it's like to be like Chopin or Liszt, right? To, um, with all of these like rolled chords and um, this really romantic aesthetic that is also very vocal and self-accompanied. Yeah. Um, have you been given some thoughts about consistency in the way that you approach these chords? So I, I'm, I'm pulling this back after playing it a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And the teacher I was with before had me separate a lot of things and uh, sustain. Mm -hmm. And then I studied with somebody that wanted me to like roll them and keep the bowings. So I'm like at a, I'm at a place where I'm like, I don't know what to do. You're in the in-betweens. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I'm, yeah. trying to I'm, I'm lacking a little bit the consistency, um, just so be, because it's so repetitive. Yes. But um, that's not a bad thing. Yeah. It's only repetitive if it's not a unit. Okay. If it's repetitive, we we get a sense of peace from it. If it's each time not quite the same, but not on purpose. Right. <laughs> uh, then we get unsettled a bit. So that's kind of like my first point. Okay. Um, and perhaps let's just work on the first phrase to, to get okay. that group. Okay. Um, and then when they're not arpeggiated, that's, that's when I, I need you to uh, just imagine more like an organ. Okay. Less um, fluttering. Okay. I like the original bowing, especially at the beginning. Okay. So I like that it's, you're doing the, the, and I like your tempo. So I think sometimes, like if people break the bow right away when it's piano, I'm gonna get really worried when it's getting to the forte part. <laughs> Maybe I'm just gonna plant a seed for the second item, but just want you to start thinking about it. It's repetitive, but it's not because it's part of an architecture. Right. So each time is not really the same effect. It's not really the same meaning because it's kind of like in Hamlet uh, when he says like words, 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 you know, like it's, it's not three times words, words, words. <laughs> right, right. right. And every Shakespearean um, uh, actress, they, they have to, to really find the meaning in repetition. So for you, it will be to, um, when you make your storyline, as this is bel canto, you know, you, you can add some, uh, some storyline, you know, like you would be a singer singing with text. So I'm missing the text. Okay. Um, and all this will help you with the arch. Okay. And, oh, Flash McQueen is here. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, please have a crack again at it. So I, okay. I'm saying all this because this is gonna affect your beginning because this is how you're gonna start. Okay. Okay. So you need to, to start in a place where this is the very beginning of your journey. Okay. Okay. So what's, what's the color for you there? What's the character? Um, oof. Um, I, I feel like at the beginning for me is like, because it gets so fiery towards the end, it kind of has to come from like, it's more painful at the beginning and more like subdued. And then like, I guess the end is more like it's more in your face. So I, I want the beginning to be a lot less. It's kind so, of okay. So think just the beginning as if you don't know the end, though. Okay. Okay. For the audience, for most people, they'll, they'll be introduced to the piece by you. That's kind right. of our mission as a violist. Often, we introduce a piece for the first time to people. So you have to start about how how you started and what what it means to them. Then, what, like you're a performer, right? So it's, what are you channeling at the very be beginning? I think probably something seeking, right? L longing for some answers. Okay. Like you know, you're just exploring a territory, but it's not so necessarily attached to some strong emotion just yet. 
Okay. Okay. Just kind of like looking for something more, maybe. Okay. Maybe a slightly unsatisfied and wanting to look for other things. Okay. missing some rosin but all of the up bows on the g string especially i'm i'm not i'm not sure if it's zoom but i don't hear the bass line doing its okay. thing okay okay can you just play the bass line for me like yeah. you're the continual player oh well, uh, what i mean is just the bottom yeah i want you to really like sing internally like Like just sing it really like your cello part and it's continuous. Okay. But literally just the bottom note, not the chord. Exactly, just uh, as I played like your cello. Okay. okay but, um, I, I know that there's a rest, but don't play the rest, like really sustain it too and, and shape it okay. while you sing internally the melody. Okay. Because to me, the second beat is a little bit more sorrowful. Okay. A little bit more pain in the second beat. Okay. Same thing. For now, because for now, you were playing a lot less the second beat. Because in music, normally, is a primary <laughs> first beat, and then second beat is not as strong. Okay. But I don't know. This one feels pretty charged. Okay. Um, ah, but don't don't play less the first beat though. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was like, wait a second. What is that? Keep, keep the structure. Keep the structure. Just add more squeeze. More okay. like, um, more of this. <laughs> okay. And now you're shaping. Oh, okay, great. Good. Glad we got that <laughs> covered. Now okay. do the whole phrase. Okay. Should I? I have a question. Because mm -hmm. do should I roll them completely, or should I like? Like play the, you know what I mean? Like I the think they're all different. It's okay that they're all different. Okay. Um, it's what I'm most interested in is yeah. um, the journey in between the notes, not okay. right. <laughs> that they're all oh, ya -da -da, ya -da. like. Have you seen Baroque harpsichord player how they break yeah. chords? Yeah. It's not like going to the grocery store for them, right? <laughs> so uh, it's not, it shouldn't be like, should I roll them or should I uh, play two and two? It's what does each of them, what does the, the little like harmonic gem, what okay. does that highlight each time? Okay. But <laughs> while keeping some kind of pulse. Okay. So, uh, a good exercise would be for you to walk around your room. I'm, I'm not sure if you have room to walk, okay. but that being your metronome. Okay. You need to fall each time on the big beat. Okay. 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 
this is what I mean by bel canto. Okay. okay. Each beat, each big beat is really rolling, but lots can happen. Anyways, lento con molta espressione, he says. <laughs> So when you start, yes. I, instead of I would do exhale before you start. Okay. because it's so good. Okay. Uh, okay, you're gonna do me a favor. The okay. third bar. This is the culmination point of your of your baby phrase. Okay. Not each time deflating. Okay, okay. Uh, maybe I should save my bow instead of what I just did, which was run out. <laughs> okay. Well, already, you know, you're you're doing dum, ta, dum, ta, ya. so already you're supposed to have more bow. Okay, okay. If the first beat, the first beat is divided by two instead of going to the tip, right? And I have a feeling that when you shift, uh, I, I do ta, da. I don't shift, but okay. I change my bow within the trill. Okay. consistency could be better also. Okay. Um, so you, you, you stay. Oh, my fourth finger. Yes. Ah, oh, sorry. Okay. The sorry. idea is that your bow um, gives courage to your fourth finger. Okay. Like, draw the energy from your bow into your fourth finger trill, and then you get to practice your fourth finger trill. Okay. Yeah, it's too much like going to the grocery store. This is what I mean by the second beat, right? To me, this one is big surprise. Okay. Uh, can I try it one more time? Yes. Okay. From, uh, okay. Sorry about my fourth finger trill. I'll practice it. I promise. It, but it's gonna yes. be bad. Yes. As you play the fourth finger trill, don't think about the fourth finger trill. Feel a ta -da, ta -da, da It's gonna eventually. Okay. It's not a forever thing. You're gonna get out of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you split you split in the middle of the trill and then Yeah, okay. Right. And then slur then slur these two. Okay. Uh, I would prescribe 
left hand articulation. Okay. Like really like. Okay. But keep them in them like keep them rolling. Okay. Unless they're chromatic. That I need super gooey. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like can you feel in a lower gear in your bike okay. it's moving forward it should be a little bit more maple syrupy maybe it's too okay. easy breezy this this bar for me okay maybe like two bars before that okay good line okay and expressivity. <laughs> okay. So okay. just like go over it um, to really nail the, the, the intonation. And what okay. will help you is to actually practice your intonation work with little vibrato, just like I demonstrated. Because if in context, you're going to vibrate. Therefore, you need to practice your intonation work with some vibrato. Okay. If you slow down and you practice slowly, make sure that you have all the elements that will be on stage with you. Okay. Otherwise, you practice intonation and then you we wonder why did it not stick during the concert, right? <laughs> well, it's no surprise, actually. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's one note you didn't vibrate. Did, okay. Can you catch which one would be? Is it the... Um... I always feel like the the last like after I play the chord the two uh, thirty seconds I don't vibrate them very well especially the third and the. Okay, yeah, yeah. It was the the E flat. Uh, but right. most importantly, I think you have to think in terms of fourth finger. You didn't vibrate your fourth finger. Okay. This is kind of recurrent since the beginning. So yeah. just you know, um, and then sometimes you completely avoid and you simply shift on one note to feel. Okay. Finger, so I would also avoid that. Okay, okay, okay. Someone is texting you. I know, I'm so sorry. Do you want to turn it on? Yeah, give me a sec. It's my, uh, my I don't know how to do anything. Is it your mom? 
probably yeah actually it really was my mom are you oh, moving okay. yeah i'm moving okay <laughs> okay, okay. So maybe let's do, um, I'm not sure how we are on time. Uh, maybe Maurizio can let me know. Oh, five more minutes, okay. And that was one minute ago, perfect. So okay. I could tell Maurizio was reaching to me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, can, you, can we move to the second tema? I just want to hear you. Um, because now, what is the character of the second tema? We're just like, now we're sorrowful, like a little bit uh, maybe like heartbreaken, uh, heartbroken. Yeah, uh, longing for something, and now and it's, more, like, it's more hopeful. It's more like uh, he he gives the answer away in the music. You can you can it's Dolce. <laughs> right. So he <laughs> it's, it's sweet. Yes, that's all. Okay, he's a simple man, Vieta. In the end, he's not <laughs> all that complicated. <laughs> so what are you, what do you need technically to be sweet? Um, more sustained. Continuous vibrato. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's try. Okay. I, I was I was hoping you would you were doing that already though, so I don't think it's okay. gonna be sweeter. I think you should do that regardless. <laughs> Let's explore. Okay. Can you get into it so you can practice the last two bars of the fada? Yeah. So to do two before. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The, um, the downbeat is the uh, arrival. Yeah. No. No. Arrival, oh, no. The arrival is Dolce. Yeah. The arrival is Dolce. So now you're making two mini phrases in two bars each. Okay. Okay. Right, you're doing that now. You're arriving to that downbeat and then deflating. Okay. okay. Go there. He doesn't write any decrescendo, right? Okay. I'm I'm overplaying now because all this is in a piano context. Okay. Okay. But I I'm just overdoing it so that in the piano context you you can keep it going because piano doesn't mean deflate all the time. Okay. okay. Piano for me means high intensity to keep it going actually. Okay. And piano means forte energy. Okay. Forte is passivity. <laughs> for you to always go up and down and up and down and up and up instead of just creating an arch that that's why I, I want you to pay attention to the base okay okay connect it with the top so you kind of have this thing moving together creating kind of like a momentum that you don't all the time have to start and stop and start and stop okay then okay. the music flows much and it, it seemed way more ergonomic how you were using all your tools Okay. And no, not complicated at all. Like you seem really effortless. Okay. Good. So, okay. I mean, I spent a lot of time because it repeats itself and all you need to do is turn up the volume. Okay. Right, right, <laughs> okay. right. Okay. And everything that I said about the, the, the quick runs, you can apply in all the second page. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. Um, are you still here? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to give you one tip to practice for the second page, okay? Okay. 
<laughs> Tabia Zimmerman, when I worked with her, she, she kind of called this the hot potato uh, exercise. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if she calls it like that, but I call it like that. <laughs> Probably she doesn't. Um, so when you do the... <laughs> In order for all all the people <laughs> to speak, right? You, you're just gonna activate. Like I'm really hitting hard. Okay. Oh, there's a truck. Hello, truck. Bye, truck. Okay. <laughs> so. And then. Okay. And when you do it next, play the wrong fingering, that doesn't help me. Like, okay. you know, I haven't played this in 15 years, but uh, just by the hot potato exercise, I could remember quickly. Okay, okay. All right? Okay. So you, you can you do for me just that one oh, bar? Yes, 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 I yes. want to see the hot potato. Okay, I don't know if I can do it as fast as you just did it, but I'll try. No, no, don't do it fast. Just hit super hard. Ah. All separate bows or all together when you do it open? Do it as, uh, as much as in a bow as possible because it's going to be in one bow. So okay. you start on a G, right? Yeah. Okay, you are avoiding once more your C string. Yeah, oh, because I'm doing open? Yeah, because when I want to hear, this is not the same effort physically. And the bass line, I, how, like if I played a melody, would I do? Right? Okay. <laughs> but treat this as a melody. Oh, I messed up. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Do the second one, second bar. Okay. And by the way, this, spoiler alert, I do in third position, this one. And then I shift on. It sounds like like uh, Metallica or something. Uh, it is. Yeah, 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 okay. So you do... Oh. By the way, there's yeah. a lot of A flats that you don't do all throughout the piece. Oh, okay, okay, great. Uh, like that one. Right. That one is just an example, but it happened a lot in the piece that I didn't hear the A flat. So why don't you, after the masterclass is posted and you have access to the recording, just yeah. go through. I didn't. I didn't talk about it because I. W I wasn't sure if there were mistake or if they were learned that way, and I didn't want to okay. waste time on it. Okay. okay. So I think that you got the hot potato. You're gonna play all the A flats where they belong. Okay. Uh, but most importantly, you're going to shape with the help of the baseline because you're a on a company, so you uh, have all the responsibility to make this thing glue together. Right. Right. And playing a work for solo viola is much more work than playing a concerto because all the concerto is supported by how many people, right? right. And right. you have a conductor who keeps it all together. And I mean, it's, it's a different type of, of preparation, but this, you need to see yourself as a pianist, really, and a singer <laughs> with okay. the bel canto okay. aspect. Okay. So many hats to wear. Now I'm talking too much and I need to move on. Ah. Do you ha does anybody have any questions? No? Everything that I said was so clear. Wow. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Shelby. Of course. It's thank lovely you. to hear you. Oh, gosh, thanks. <laughs> You've been doing well? Yeah, pretty well. It seems like you guys have a great summer with the OF. It's, uh, yes, yes. Keeping you busy, which is yes. all you need. And which is what I need. You're keeping me busy, too. So that's nice. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, next will be, oh, there's a new order. Yeah, that's me. Okay, Lorenzo. Hi. I uh, how it's are you? Fine, you? Very good. So uh, what are you playing? 
I have uh, a meditation by In The Mid, but it, it's with the piano, so I don't know, and uh, a back uh, sarabanda. Right. Uh, what is best for you to play today? It's okay, uh, the same, as you will, as you prefer. Oh, you're making me choose. That's not fair. <laughs> uh, well, I, I can never say no to some Bach. Some Bach, okay. Yeah. How can I say no to Bach? Yeah. <laughs> so I guess I cannot make you walk today, huh? Sorry? I cannot make you walk like Shelby. No, oh, it's impossible here, sorry. <laughs> you can do some just steps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like fake walking. By the way, Shelby, you didn't walk. I didn't see you walk. You'll have to practice your vuitton while walking around your apartment. That's, that should be your metronome. Okay, Lorenzo.
That's fantastic, Lorenzo. Thank you so much. Thank you know you. what I what I appreciated is that you didn't ask me if you should take the repeat or not. You just did it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. No, this is something very positive that I want to tell you because I always feel that when people ask me like, oh, should I do the repeat? You know, and then it's like actually you should always take the repeat because each time is not the same and you know so i, I knew that it was going to be good just because you didn't ask me that question <laughs> so i'm really i'm really happy to to hear uh, all the musicality that came out of your bark and the phrasing was wonderful i appreciate the contouring you know like what you choose to highlight and um i think it's, it was very very successful can, can you tell me a little bit about you? Because I don't know you. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm Italian. <laughs> I'm uh, 23 years old. And now I'm living in Amsterdam because I study at the Conservatory of Amsterdam with uh, Nobu Kwimai. Ah, okay, great. Excellent. So, yeah, she's wonderful. <laughs> she's beautiful. And, uh, it's a great experience for me. And uh, yeah, I completed this master there. But now I'm in Italy because because of the pandemic. Right. Okay. So, so maybe you know uh, one of my former teacher, uh, Bruno Giorana. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Okay. Well, I mean, you sound wonderful and I'm, I don't want to, I don't want to mess with too much of what you're doing because it's successful. So that's part of my job is just receiving things good when it's good. Um, you know, I, did you play violin before you played viola? Yeah, I gave up the violin, I think, uh, six or seven years ago. Okay, because there's, for me, there was one element of your playing that was obvious for me that you played violin before. And it, it's the way that your elbow levels uh, mm. is quite low all the time. A little low. It's always low, yes. Okay. And I think that's very good for the A string and the D string, what you're doing. But I think, I'm not sure if it's Zoom, which is maybe compressing a bit, but in the lowered register, I feel you could get a little bit more articulation, a little bit more definition, and just more sound. Okay. Out of the, yep. out of the G and C string, and really, it's a simple fix. It's just like... Um, <laughs> It's just the elbow level to follow the string that you're playing on. Mm -hmm. Look. I'm not changing the pressure. It's just the elbow level. Okay. Yeah, sure. So if that can be your one takeaway from me today, that would, that would only be that. So uh, for, for the, the Bach. And then one thing that I'd like to review Okay. Sometimes in your, there's someone mowing the lawn. I'm very sorry. Sometimes in the contouring, you will kind of, especially if there's a string crossing in between mm. the, the shapes that you're making, there's kind of a stop. And I'm wondering if you help yourself, if, if the elbow leads to the, to the change of strings, like anticipate a little bit. To connect better. I'm wondering if it would kind of erase these gaps and connect everything. Okay. Because yeah. it wouldn't it wouldn't take away the contouring. Mm. It's just it would take away these holes. Okay. Yes. So to connect better the cross uh, the cross the chain the crossing, string chain. The string crossing with anticipating with your elbow levels. Okay. So you see, like I have I had a technical component that I thought maybe it would be more efficient when you're playing to raise the elbow, but then also it's going to support your musical idea because it will make sure. your, your contouring um, seamless. That's what I mean, seamless. Okay, thank let's you. Let's start sure. again. Let's start, let's start with that in mind. Do all the things that you do beautifully, just like you did, but just add this element, see if it works. Okay. So already, um, you start elbow or dumbo? Dumbo. Okay, so... Okay. 
no, no, that what I'm doing now is wrong. Ah, okay. okay sorry. Now it's right. <laughs> By the end of, let me stand up. You see, I'm playing on one string, but I'm gonna change the elbow level within that E, so that when I get, mm. yes. I, just have, I just have with the, the fingers to go grab the string, but not with my elbow, my elbow is already there. Yes, so. so without any little string though. Just um do this in two segments. Stop. <laughs> One more time, okay? Okay, now do it seamlessly. Okay. It feels like a little uh, not natural now for me. I understand, but uh, see it as you're, you're kind of like opening your wings. Mm. Because yes. you always play with your elbow low, and I'm worried about this muscle being closed sometimes. And again, I'm not sure if it's zoom, but I feel that the sound is a little bit like this. Mm. And if you just open, open that muscle, and the elbow is the only uh, part of your right side of your body that can help you unlock this muscle right here. This is the muscle like kind of like underneath your, um, like this muscle. Yes, this one. The armpit. <laughs> I need you to unlock your armpit. Okay. <laughs> we said it. We said it. This is all over YouTube now. Okay. string piece. Can, can you explore the cello fatness? it looks because all the motions are bigger right mm. for you all the motions are, are really like you're playing on the violin everything is nearby but for me the expressivity is in the reach okay so, uh, if you are a singer it's such a big gap I cannot even go there my voice isn't doesn't allow me. Okay, yes, yes, sure, I understand. Good, now do it. Okay. <laughs>
it's very good. The contouring there, for me, there's too much stuff in between. I love the idea, but it Wait. sounds like an idea. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm so happy to report that you've taken your idea too far. I, know, okay. I, I don't see this enough. Uh, I, I love seeing this because it doesn't happen too, too often. Wait, Thank so you. More, more continues. Yes, but feel the change. Uh, it's two voices, right? That's what you're highlighting there like two different instruments, it's great, just don't make the music stop. Okay. So, uh... And I'm wondering something. Um, Sorry? I'm wondering something. Um, what notes did, does the thing start on? Uh... Um, could that second one be more the bass? Because now you do always the same model. More the top, yeah. less the bass. More the top, less the bass. How about more the top, less the bass? And then less the top, more the bass. So it's really ta like this, like a valley. Can, okay. can you start again? Yes. I will. Oh, I don't see you. Sorry, I don't see you. Okay, now you. Okay, sorry. What you said? What did you say? Because I love. I miss you. Can you hear me now? How is this now? Is this good? Oh, Lorenzo, is he still here? Uh Okay, also here we are. All right. So all I meant, Lorenzo, is that you're doing the same model, like more the top, less the base, more the top, less the base. Can you try once? More the top, less the base, less the top, more the base. Ah, uh, okay. Or the contrary, the opposite. Okay, sure. It's like a mirror effect I want you to make. Oh, sorry. Uh. section that you're doing I see in your face that you want more sound Is that yeah. correct? and um, I feel that there's a little bit of tightness in that muscle that we discuss this can we try can we try to unlock it by can you unlock your knees I don't see your knees but I have a feeling that they are like let's see this is your knee I have a feeling that it's like ah uh, where am I? Okay, I have a feeling it's straight like this. Can you just like unlock a little bit? Can you do this passage with a, I call this spongy, spongy knee. Like you're doing qigong. Okay, yeah. A little bit. Just to get more sound. Don't put it in your jaw. Like I see your jaw clenching a little bit. Okay. of this experiment i feel more comfortable and it looks more comfortable 
and I feel less fear of of uh, having weight with the bow. Yes, and and do you know why? I think because uh, everything starts from the feet, and so the the balance we have on our feet, something like this. Yes. Well. Okay. So you unlock your knees which released your your hip bones right like the, the 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 bigger part of your body is the this these bones here so by unlocking yeah. you were able to free this and what happened is that then this was unlocked and mm. this resulted that you also took more bone oh, okay I... you took more bow and and you were able to use more pressure. So this is all elements that results to a bigger climax. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, so, there's, so sometimes when you feel that you're tight in the upper part of your body, it's most likely a consequence of something in the lower body that just needs a little bit of attention. I get okay, very sure, yeah, sure. sometimes with uh, some like string players approach in the pedagogy is either there's a problem with the right arm or the left arm but in the end there's also this component and there's also the lower body which plays such a strong role in yeah. string playing um absolutely i, I very much uh, love everything that you did now i think that you can explore um when you practice skills like not something that you're like emotionally engaged just be aware of your elbow levels and and practice it in something very simple that you don't feel like um, like in a master class setting like you want to sound beautiful you know and um, maybe you don't dare to like I feel like you, you maybe didn't try all the way the elbow anticipation yeah and in the practice room all I wish for you is that um, you're going to actually uh, take a risk mm of not sounding nice like maybe it's the maybe because you said it's uncomfortable right but it's uncomfortable because only because it's new yeah okay so yeah sure not, i don't want you to just throw the idea because it's not comfortable right away like i can see that you're um, a natural player but in order for your sound to bloom you're going to on the viola you're going to need to raise your elbow levels on these last two strings and and please explore in the practice room because when I was 23, are you still there, Lorenzo? Yeah, okay. When I, when I was 23, I wish someone... Yeah, yeah I see you. Okay, great. So I, I wish, um, like, some years ago, that I took more risks in the practice room, instead of always caring about how I sounded. <laughs> to, to, to take the practice room as a lab. Oh, yeah. Just, and to just go over the fears of having the sound to crack like only in the practice room to have the sound to crack is going to teach you something much more than always sounding pretty okay yeah sure thank you thank you you sound fantastic thank you okay so next will be uh, is it kemi or on you kemi. okay Qu'est-ce que tu vas jouer, Camille? Euh, Lamentation de Jérémie. Oh, wow! Ouais. Um, Est-ce que tu préfères que je donne ton cours en français ou en anglais? Ça peut être en anglais pour les autres, il n'y a pas de problème. OK. Si jamais il y a quelque chose euh, que tu veux que je clarifie en français, tu me le diras. Uh, just for uh, uh, the other people that are watching, the Lamentations of Jeremiah is by Milton Barnes, and it's a uh, Canadian music, um, and it's uh, like so deeply uh, infused with uh, like Jewish uh, music, and um, it, it, it's just a gorgeous, like it's like the perfect viola piece for solo viola, I find. And actually, it's the first Canadian piece that I ever learned when I was 16, I think, and uh, it exposed me to this, um, to new music and to Canadian content. So this, every, every time someone plays for me, the lamentation, it really brings back some good memories. Um, okay, so I have the music because you've sent it to me. I downloaded it. Now I just have to find it. Uh, 
And Camille, can you tell me uh, you're in school where right now? Uh, I'm in Montreal uh, with Utah. Ah, you with Utah, great. Okay. Um, oh, I see. It's all single pages. I see it now. Okay, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> ici parce que c'est il en reste quand même un bon bout puis c'est très 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 dense là cette musique là c'est je trouve ça merveilleux comment tu joues ça um, I, I really like a lot of things that you're doing um, I would like you to take um, everything is just a little bit <laughs> um, can you feel like you're uh, 80 years old maybe okay. it's too uh, youthful and um, uh, Uh, like full of energy. I would love to see it a little bit like a monk or um, very poised and wise. Um, and then, uh, especially like when you do, um, I would like you to go on a fingering hunt. Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, you do but everything is the same color, right? If, I would keep, and then I, I know that he says maybe to, uh, but I try to keep everything like um, on one string if you can. Okay. 
for these types of, of material. Um, just I, I'm going to give you a few comments and then you're going to do it again, okay? So for me, these fermatas. It's at least four beads. So the general rules that I've been taught is four beads plus two, like plus half. So it's the full length plus half the length for a fermata. And he doesn't write, however, a tempo marking yet. Mm. So I don't know. Maybe you can make it um, 60 equals a quarter. OK, so it's a little bit slow, but not too slow. Two, three, four, three. Right? Then it's uh, faster. Da -da 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 -da. And then one, two, three. And this one doesn't have a swell, right? The first one has a diminuendo, yeah. and then the third one has nothing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And each time I hear a swell, each time. Okay. So this is really like when I started playing new music, I felt that I started playing music because. I started to really connect more with the composer because if they were dead, they were not like Beethoven dead, you know, like they were closer to, to my era. And I felt like a response as if they were like watching me, you know, <laughs> like, are you doing this little comma? Are you doing this format I'm doing? Uh, there's no gap. Why, why are you adding a gap? Like I started asking myself all these questions. So I would like you to really play what exactly is there. And it, the, the good news is nobody fully does what is written. So you will have a really unique interpretation by just doing what it says, because nobody does that ever. So the first is opening up in, within the first bar, and then uh, diminendo, and then nothing. Okay, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Where are you going with your, like I see a swell, right? But I feel that you're doing a piano to forty to piano. Yeah. I, it's I don't just, know huh? I don't know actually. <laughs> right, I, I know you don't know, that's why I'm, I'm asking you. So um, if a, a swell for me is just, it's just a little bit enflé. A little bit uh, swollen, but not like a bear attack in the middle. To me, it sounds the same. It sounds still too much. So can, and you're gonna have six beats, right? And so only on the fourth beat, you're gonna peak. Yeah. Yeah. And Right now, I feel that your vibrato is set for like forte mode. Can you set it for this really mysterious quality? Yeah, and, and can you erase the gap in between the long note and the small notes? No gap. You're gonna need a really fast bow, huh? So I would use this kind of contact point. Cantabile. Okay. I know he writes lyrical, but for me, it's more a monk singing in church rather than Pavarotti <laughs> singing at La Scala. Okay, so you, it's it's lyrical, but 
you have to find what is the, the right affect of lyrical. Okay, let's move on. And now see this, this piece is like meditation, right? It's, it, it's sorrowful, but there's a control over it. written but I think that I would do the first one maybe more uh, than less or less more uh, uh, as you wish but not twice the same maybe yeah okay, okay. <laughs> Because here there's no swells yeah. and and how you played it uh, these last few times uh, there's like ups, ups and down every time there's a long note so let's okay. let's make it super like sustainable yeah. but also the vibrato has its part to play if you do I hear a swell right so but um, my vibrato is continuous. <laughs> chords with uh, a lot of sound I don't think that you should drop okay I think it just means that you grew even more especially that you came for three times three notes now you're reaching one single note so and in a lower register so just um, still play with a lot of intensity there the the little 16 notes rest to me is a little bit too long okay um, I don't see the music, sorry. <laughs> right? It's, it's only like, it's almost like the monk swallowed the fly or something, you know? also been 15 years that I didn't play this so I think I played this at the same time as the Vuitton seriously it's really funny um, so can there's be more energy in the eight notes you know like the fourth line it's a little bit uh, so you can maybe lift 
after these these the like maybe you can lift a little bit okay or more bull speed maybe on that one note Have you tried? I've never tried this fingering, but I'm wondering how it would sound like. Mm. So you don't, so it's really like no vibrato, no slur, uh, no shift, so pure. And then you lift the bow, you sh you prepare your harmonic, and then. Okay. Want to try that? Yeah, I I really like that. It's really evocative. And then the the. Um, the challenge will be to reduce that gap each time you practice it. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> cool. Ta -da -da -da, then it's maybe a female voice. Are you aware of the tempo that you're doing this? Uh, yeah, maybe after. Yes. <laughs> It's still too fast. Let's let's. Um, do you have a metronome with you? Uh, yeah. I I would love to hear seventy six. Yeah. Da 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 da. It should be more sticky. Like this is. Oh. Yeah. Good luck. that is more sticky, not too much moving forward. Okay. Uh, again? Yeah. With the metronome or? No, no, not necessary, but uh, don't go, go forward, really anchor yourself. Just that um, that you keep it as a because then then we get the the open strings. Oh, okay. Don't give it away. Well, I did. I dared to do a fourth finger. Oh my god! You guys don't do fourth fingers or what? Is that an OX thing? <laughs> Bartok Hungarian. Take your idea further. I love it, but just more. Can I have more energy in the bowl? Yeah. 
good to you. It sounds great. so you can do a big gap. such a big climax right i want you to like surf on it a little bit longer okay and if the beginning you play much more like reserved and don't do too much just swells like with volume but more with sweeping i think the contrast then is is really what is interesting in the end so before you play the beginning a little bit too loud and then this, you didn't really go for it. So everything is more equalized. So in the practice room, just go and dare and play two stuff. And maybe your bow will shake. So what? Only you will hear it. And then you can explore, is there something that you need to kind of uh, relax in order not to shake? Or should you just accept that maybe it will shake a little bit? And you know what? Most people will not hear. Yeah. <laughs> And it's not, it's just because this, that kind of sound, it doesn't really carry in the hall, right? We feel that like the bow is bouncing up and down so much, but it's normal that if you use very shimmery sound and you vibrate, the, the string is doing this. So if you try, oh, I don't want my bow to vibrate, this kind of going against nature, just go with it. Like, it's a, it's a very fragile motif, right? It's like a little bit sick even. Mm -hmm. It's something very old and achy and like old men singing, it's not always pretty, is it? Yeah. So yeah. just dare in the practice room to push yourself to these limits of extreme soft and discomfort, really like uncomfortable. I, I wish I did more of this practice. I really wish. This, this is what I'm trying to make you not afraid in the practice room. Just dare, dare to do all the contrast. Uh, okay, let's go to the second page. pianissimo in a few places. Okay. So maybe um, at the beginning of I would write pianissimo at the beginning of there. Okay. And here I would also write uh, si do la fa mi. There I would write it. And then I would write here. 
Pianissimo. Pianissimo. I would write here too. Okay. It's kind of like the Debussy quartet. So, what am I going to say about the beginning of this thing? Mm -hmm. What am I going to say to you about how you played? To play faster? Exactly. Not necessarily. Did, no. did you add anything that, were, that was not written? Oh, okay. Yeah, I see. <laughs> say it. Say it out loud. Yeah, yeah, I know. I just need to keep the sound a little. A little bit more even, right? So, and, and, and the vibrato, right? And here will be a question of anticipation again. And then you retake. 
-hmm. so it can it can make a natural diminuendo and i don't like the open string there because it's the ugliest note of the whole viola yeah. Continue. Uh, do we have time? I, I have no idea. I'm, I'm here for you. <laughs> Just tell me. No. Okay. Excellent. Just continue until we're <laughs> Can I hear it? Take it, 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 shifting you, you need to find a position and put your hand in a hand frame then I would do four and then two second position two four three one find a, a hand block It's a little bit cleaner. Okay. You just need to get used to funny fingerings now. Okay. And and instead of doing this is a violin fingering, look. Two, two, why don't you do three, zero, two. Yeah. This is a Michael Tree fingering. It's like a finger compression. That's what that's what the cellist would do. And then you'll be able to play with lots of articulation really quickly. Yeah, okay. Do you want to do the hot potato? Yeah, I hear yeah. that. <laughs> oh, so you have to add the open string. Like, you have to touch it like the hot potato. That's. Okay, let's see how that works now. It's okay because it's a hard fingering that I just gave you, but it's gonna pay off. Yeah, yeah. So the only thing, the only other one I would explore is starting in third position, then do an extension. One, three, two, one. No. And then only extension. true Michael tree fingering so so clean right yeah I can yeah, do you want to marry with this one should we commit let's do that one yeah, yeah okay. it's better than the first one I give you actually
feel that we are really deep in the lamentation element, right? <laughs> so the... Can the vibrato also support this like, ya -da 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 -da, like a little bit more intense? I feel you're having a really normal crisis. Can I in the this half step? Can I hear a little bit more squeeze or? more um, solid if you keep them down. Uh, for a really nice and solid vibrato. When you practice your octave uh, scales, mm -hmm. do you make sure that you practice them with vibrato also? Uh, sometimes, yeah. Okay. Because um, I, I have a feeling that the hand should be a little bit more flexible than it is now without having to lift. Now you're lifting the fingers to unlock tension, but yeah, yeah. Okay. Creating more tension. Okay, yeah. I, I'm gonna want you to watch this video again and watch your your middle finger. Okay. You're flicking some people off. <laughs> In the second uh, semester, I uh, got graduated, so that was the interesting part. Thanks to the uh, you got I, what? I got graduated, <laughs> so. What does that mean? You graduated? No, I mean because of the school, you know, school uh, the the virus, the school closed down. Oh. Early. So yeah, so, but uh, okay. I, yeah, I'm I'm doing fine. Uh, staying home, just practicing a lot, and uh, look forward. Okay. Excellent. So um. So I saw you have Tom Hauser and something else. What is the something else? Bach, number, uh, Bach. Bach right, number, three. number three. What do you want to do for me today? Uh, didn't you play Bach prelude for me before? 
That was a number one. That was like. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure. Okay, excellent. So why don't? What do you want to do? It's what, your time. What would you like? No, 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 no! Don't flip this back on me. What do you want to do? What is most helpful? What do you need most help with? Okay. Be honest well, with yourself. I'll try Town Hauser without warm up and uh, you know face my. Oh kick. my goodness! Okay. Uh, how? It, well, I'm gonna have a lot of fun. I'm sure. Give me I'm gonna turn off my audio because it's like truck festival. Oh. <laughs> Give me one second. <laughs> Because I have yours, but it has none of Andre's markings on it. Um, oh, I up. Yes. <laughs> sound great. Um, so, what is the? Um, okay, for me, it, it's only a couple a couple things that I would like to explore at age right away. I need a little bit more um, molto espressivo, you know. No, as you're preparing for something that it's like so digital, right? This excerpt, like starting at I, it's just like pressing play and the machine just does its magic. But don't underestimate the power of age mm -hmm. and what the, the panel is looking for. Like this effervescent quality. And what is, you know, I can, now I see like Andre is like right here with me. Um, <laughs> yeah. This Andre vibrato, you know, when he looks like, like this? Yeah. Uh -huh. and can I hear more like this kind of shimmery vibrato? And then uh, a little bit more active. 
action. It's a little bit like, doo -doo -doo. like it seems like you've been playing this a lot. Maybe uh, don't make this into a stale cookie, this part especially. Can you, can, you, can you put like a little bit of uh, simmering? Exhale. It's great. It's great, but don't move around so much. Don't change all the parameters that you're that you're building. It's it's all in the vibrato and in the bow speed. But don't start swimming. Hey, there's is there someone handling the camera? Because it's making me seasick a little bit. Oh yeah. Sorry. Okay, okay. No, well, it's okay. It's just I don't want you to move to go away. Okay.
I hear? Can I hear that change, harmonic change? I wouldn't do it's like all of them are a little bit more and different. Everything is in the crescendo, gradual crescendo. What should we do in this kind of situation where uh, if there's a mistake, should you do what the... Because OSM provides these excerpts, no? Uh, yeah, this is... Well, uh, yeah, this is one of OSM stuff. Yes, for sure. Right. So just check because I've never heard any of Andre's students play another note than the B there. So. Oh, okay. I will definitely... Uh, I, this, okay, so this piccato just to... It's not a spiccato, right? It's by playing on the string yes. at a fast pace that the bow will do what it's doing now. So I'm actually thinking to play on. Thank you. 
Mm -hmm. It was a little bit still in the hyper energy. So D to set the gear S ace up. Yes. Mm -hmm. strings are on so I never write them out mm -hmm. but if you feel that you should then you can do that um, th so everything in this passage is gonna go to the next level as soon as you start doing hand separate so yes you can do because what you will hear is what you will realize from doing that is that you real, you'll realize when you have time to relax in both your left hand and both in your right hand when there's a suspension, right? You can also add the slurs as I did. Are you, are you incorporating these elements into your practice for this one? Used to. Oh, okay. So, so I, I would never kind of like play the Townhauser excerpt as is. I would, if I'm preparing it for something, mm -hmm. most my day of preparation with it will be breaking it down and turning it into exercise. And then maybe I'll run it once or twice, but mm -hmm. uh, most of the work will be like Ikea work, mm -hmm. like reverse Ikea, deconstruction, mm -hmm. disassembling. Assemble, okay. And okay. um, so, Otherwise, can we look at K? I, I need more energy in your bow. Ta -dum -ba -da. Like fireworks. Okay, and here, your vibrato is a little bit tight. Can you, can you release your thumb? Don't release out of the viola, but um this knuckle just make sure it's not locked uh okay i think i do you know this andre shift where the bow completely stops No. 
It's like a HD shift. HD shift. Yeah. Now you will really hear where your finger goes because sometimes we do right yep. <laughs> like really go for it see like ah okay see what's the situation <laughs> you would do the same uh, uh, I think even like this one he stops the bow stop to really know what's the situation there where is your finger actually landing for real without you lying up to yourself okay um he says, check it, but the OSM version should be correct, says Jean-Philippe Tremblay. Is it possible that in that chord, that B actually belongs as a crunch note on purpose? In a... I, I don't know, but the last time, uh, in the chord, the woodwinds are playing the, uh, the C-sharp minor chords there. So I thought it must be C-sharp. No, no, no. Because... I think we need that B. Just check with Andre also, okay? Okay, for sure. This will remain unresolved and then email me because I really want to know. <laughs> um, okay, so one more thing. Accent. Both speed. This, and then, so if you do slowly. With the vibrato, what you fingering? Do you, uh, what going? Uh, what you're doing? Right. So that's, I need you to be more active in that last note. Yeah. Well, now 
I think that you're you're like over analyzing something. Just picture like this is a glass of orange juice, like full of vitamin C. This is a unit. Oh. But I just need you to use more bow. Uh, just use more bow. And okay. No. clenching with your thumb which makes you not able to vibrate like with anything. Now I hear through zoom I hear the overtones much more even through zoom just now. Yes that's it. So he writes molto vivace right? Like, yeah. so alive. He wants it to be like super vibrant. Mm -hmm. So don't get caught sometimes in the kitchen work. Like we need kitchen work to support the um, musical element, right? That they're always together. Mm -hmm. It's okay to dissemble and to assemble, but for always a musical purpose, not just to be a robot, right? Otherwise it's, there's no use. Mm -hmm. And the, the orchestra that, yes, they want accuracy, but they want accuracy married to musicality. For sure. Which is why people who win orchestral auditions are superheroes. <laughs> because they, they can be consistent and they can be musical all at once. Mm -hmm. um, so, do you want to play a little bit of your Bach? Sure. I have no idea when this stops, so do you just tell me when it's over, <laughs> you guys? Well, it's supposed to stop at 2.30, but I think we started a little late, so... Oh, I see. Okay, so let's play a couple minutes of your Bach, and I, I can give you, like, a, a few impressions. We won't have time to, like, work on it, but um, I'm, I'm happy to provide some, like, key elements for you to grab in the practice room. Sure. like the sunshine, the sunny, vitamin C, orange juice, and, and, I, and your bow is, is nice, but it's the, I don't feel the energy. And can you just unfold more? Can you show me that when I told you earlier that I don't hear you, like I don't hear you, that's what I mean. I just, I don't want to hear just beautiful playing, I want to hear you. Take care of the issue. But right. 
by telling yourself like you got this like you can do this that's uh, that's in sports psychology it's called self-talk so you're like you're pumping yourself up for a good performance right sure okay i think that's what i'm doing yeah but this should happen before right before you play it then when you start all you think about is the shaping and and you what, what you want to do with the contouring you know and to to really fully listen to actually how you're sounding because now I'm I'm not hearing the, your musical um, I'm I'm not you hearing your musical ideas I'm I, I could sense that you were not thinking about the music. Hmm. Okay, so um, start one more time. I will I will demonstrate to you w how it sounds like if I'm thinking about I got this I can do this uh, you know or if I'm shaping you will hear the difference I hope. First one will be, um, I got this, okay? Okay, and now I will fully just listen to what I'm doing and where I want it to go. So there's there's one that is hopefully across Zoom a little bit more engaged with the craftsmanship. I hope. And the first one is solely like muscle memory. So maybe you can investigate in your practice room um, because this is kind of an on and off switch. And for me, like Andre's time with me was only to make it turn on always when I play because sometimes I would let the muscle memory kind of do the work for me, but I wouldn't be fully present. And then when it's time for the audition, you cannot just magically turn it on. Like for me, the practicing, the viola was practicing the on switch, always on, always on. And whenever it would kind of fade, so this is, this can be called either concentration, this can be called uh, focus, attention, you know, um, awareness, all these kind of mindfulness, you know, all these words, but it's simple to think of it as on switch. I think this is going to help you a lot that you turn it on during the practice time. And when you feel it's fading, just put the viola away, do something else. And then when you pick it up again, on. No, just like pilot mode. All right. Cool. So you, you sound great and um, it's, I'm, I'm really happy that you're getting to study with André and uh, you'll be learning a lot, I'm sure. Uh, and uh, so Maurizio, thank you. Thank you so, so much. Merci beaucoup d'avoir organisé merci. tout ça. Merci à, merci à vous. Uh, merci de la part de Jean-Philippe, uh, oui. who has had to transition <laughs> to a next master class, but thank you so much for your uh, time and expertise and passion for the viola. And uh, thanks to our participants, uh, yeah, who I think so all much, played. Everyone. Yeah. Thank you and um, uh, à la prochaine. Um, à la prochaine. <laughs> thank you. Bonne thank journée. you on you. Bye. Bravo on you. Bravo à tous. Bye. -bye. Bye.